Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to our next episode of The Final Measure. On, uh, in this episode here, what we've decided to do is go ahead and update a little differently another one of our guitars. What we have in front of us here is a Fender New Porter acoustic electric guitar. This guitar has a solid mahogany top, back, and sides. Uh, the maple dots and all maple binding and maple around the rosette of the sound hole. It has uh, a bone nut and saddle. And in this case, it also has um, the ebony pin. So we're gonna do a little bit of uh, design changes here. We actually looked and found some decals that we're gonna try out and see how well they work. We're gonna try to apply a vine and a um, pearl rosette around the sound hole and then I'm going to go ahead and change the uh, ebony pins uh, to make them bone, give it a little bit more contrast. This is the first time we've ever done something like this. I uh, felt that this guitar would be the one that would benefit the most from it uh, in the area of looks and stuff. So the first thing we're going to do as always is remove the old strings. Uh, Unfortunately, these strings aren't really that old, but for this operation, we'll go ahead and make it a complete changeover, including new strings. So as you can see, I'm just finishing taking the strings off the pegs on the headstock. What attracted me to this guitar in the first place was, of course, it is a Fender, and of course the woods. Um, all walnut, uh, or I'm sorry, all mahogany gives a great tone. We got the strings off of the headstock. Best little tool in the world here. If you find yourself a set of replacement pins, sometimes this comes with the uh, with the set of pins. The old way was a pair of needle nose, and sometimes that uh, didn't do well when the pins came out. So the strings are off. Put them into their disposal mode by wrapping them tightly in a circle. When you throw them away, you don't get uh, pinched when you lift the garbage bag up. Okay, just for general knowledge, and uh, observation, I guess, if you look under, just like our last video, when we updated the uh, Taylor A12, there is the pickup for this guitar, sitting nice and snug inside the saddle. So one of the first things the instructions tell us is to uh, make sure the neck is dry, free of dust. This will have no neck moisturizer or conditioner put on it uh, prior to this evolution. This again is an experiment. We just came across this and thought we would try it out. Uh, you might see another video in this regard because Carol has went out and bought herself a new acoustic mini bass, all black, and she plans on uh, acquiring some of the same decals um, to apply to that guitar so uh, we might have another one of these if this is successful so the first thing we need to do these are the decals that are going to go on the neck each decal is in a section for the frets this is going to be fret 1 down to fret 9 and fret 10 all the way to 24 this guitar does not have 24 frets so when we get down to this area uh, we'll make some decisions on which decal to apply and which ones not to apply. Uh, fret 12 
and fret 24. You'll notice those are the octave frets. They have the larger of the two decals. So the first thing the instructions tell us to do is to turn it over like this and go ahead and rub the back of it with something like a credit card. We're using this piece of plastic uh, pampered chef material. Uh, what this is going to do, it's going to adhere the decal off of this paper and onto the plastic on the other side. Uh, after we do that, we'll cut it into sections, apply each section between each set of frets, and then do the same thing to transfer the decal off of the plastic and onto the guitar neck. All right, so next what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the decal for the first fret. And again, have to let everybody know this is the first time we've been doing this, so uh, it's an adventure for everyone here. Now, if it worked the way it's supposed to, when I pull, and it did not. So initially, this first one did stick to the paper, so we stopped and uh, rubbed it again. As I was pulling it off the paper, the section that you see still attached to the paper was still sticking. So I just reversed the pull, and now the decal has come off properly. So our next trick is to go ahead and place it onto the fret where we would like it. Again, I'm going to try to get the vine as close to the next fret as possible. And then, of course, Anybody who's ever done uh, the decal that you put on your car or truck, it's basically the same, same procedure. Now, the people we bought these from, which is, the name of the company is uh, Giacomo Inlay Stickers, claim that these stickers can easily come off if you get tired of them or you want to change them. I guess my concern is how easy is easy. Um, but again, the initial investment to try it out and see what it does, I, I feel is probably well worth it. I'm going to go ahead and put that back and give this section another rub. Uh, one of the main ingredients that does not come with these kits is patience. And I'm sure as we go through all 22 frets, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, 21 frets, uh, we'll probably have to refill that bucket a few times. So there it is pressed onto the fret. There it is with the sticky back removed. And applied, which appears to be nicely. It is slightly raised. Uh, nothing that I think is going to interfere with playing or for that matter, it coming off with any uh, real ease. I think there is probably a procedure which I'll have to look up as how to remove these if we decide we don't like what's there or if we want to change it to something else. So there is fret one. All right, so what we've done is we've completed the first three frets and uh, how we'll show this to you is we'll stop at frets 5, 9, 12 and then the final uh, fret here 21. So what we've learned so far is lining them up seems to be pretty easy. What they do is the uh, vine uh, decals actually come with a template so you can actually tell which, which uh, piece goes on which fret. And it is set up for a 24 fret guitar. Um, the only thing we've seen so far is to make sure that it is down pat. You'll notice that uh, 
the dot on the uh, third fret is, is well covered and hidden. And everything else seems to be doing quite well at this point in time. Again, you do feel a little bit of an edge, but nothing that should affect playing uh, or the uh, removal of the sticker. So we will go ahead and continue on now down to the fifth fret. All right, so now we have uh, completed through the fifth fret on this guitar. As you probably saw earlier on, there was a maple dot on both the third and the fifth fret. Uh, those dots are not visible. So we will now continue. We'll meet you down at the ninth fret. All right, we just completed the ninth fret. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we did a little research. Each one of these decals is 0 0.07 millimeter thick. Um, since we started this evolution and then started with the string removal, we are now at the 45 minute mark. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the clock on exactly how much time it takes us. And of course, depending on uh, your own personal abilities, uh, that should be ballpark figure for everybody. So we're going to continue on. We'll, uh, we'll meet you at the 12th fret, one octave up. All right, um, I'm doing the uh, 10th fret right now, but I did want to make some notes. As we are applying this decal, as you notice, I am taking the cradle for the neck and I'm sliding it down toward the body to give it a little bit more um, support. And uh, also, the only issue that we're having, and it's not a big one, is that the smaller section decals are applying a little bit more care, requiring a little bit more care to make sure that they stick uh, the first time. All right, so we're at the 12th fret. Uh, we're at about an hour into the evolution, just a few minutes shy of that. I thought I would go ahead and uh, do some explaining as we put the 12th fret decal in. So to prepare it, what I'm doing is taking the credit card and I'm rubbing over to press down just one more time before cutting out the specific section uh, for the fret required. After that, uh, we're peeling it back, making sure that the decal stays with the clear plastic part, and then uh, lining it up properly on the fret using the vine as a, uh, as a guide. Go from one section to another. All okay. right. And then once we're uh, satisfied with its placement, just initially pressing down with our finger and then going get our little credit card and doing the rest of the installation by applying a little bit more pressure. Like I said, moving the uh, cradle down for extra support on the neck has uh, definitely been a help. So with the uh, 12th fret, as you know, with the twin dots indicating the octave on the neck, uh, you can see that this one here has nicely covered both dots. And now we'll just go ahead and pick up one side or the other, start peeling it back. If it uh, decides to stay onto the plastic, we'll lay it back down again, put a little more pressure, which you see that one is doing. And then uh, if nothing else, we'll start peeling from the other direction to uh, get that off. And I have been carefully, after removing the plastic backing, just gently going over one more time to make sure these fine corners are in fact laid down on the neck. And uh, we'll call it one hour right there to get to the first 12 frets. As the frets become smaller, the work becomes a little bit more difficult. Uh, you don't have the flexibility in the room, distance between the frets, but uh, so far we're quite impressed with the way it looks. Fifteen frets down, six more frets to go as we uh, get these final frets 
installed, we'll go ahead and make a decision on how we want to end our vine. All right, so we just finished. So the Vine of Life decal is complete. Uh, total time since we've started this whole evolution is exactly one and a half hours. Um, again, that time may vary depending on how much trouble you have with the decals, but we are very, very impressed. And uh, once we complete this entire video, we will give information on this site. Uh, our next evolution is to proceed to the sound hole. Uh, I have some white pearl uh, that I'm going to go ahead and attempt to put inside this mahogany area and uh, try to accent the vine and then uh, we'll finish up by putting in the uh, bone string pins and a, and a new set of uh, elixirs. So we'll be back in a minute to get started with that. All right, so the second part of this evolution was to put this pearl inlay, but it is not gonna be possible. Uh, the obvious radius of this sound hole in this fender new porter is not the same radius as this decal. Now, uh, to be honest, I did not check on the website to see if there are different radius, radii, uh, for a specific sound hole, which I will do. And if I find that there is, I will investigate uh, measure and investigate to acquire the proper one to install at a, at a later time. But as of right now, uh, this, uh, this part of the evolution will not take place. Okay, so a little bit disappointed in, in the regard of the sound hole, but uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Like I said, we are going to go ahead and do some investigation to see if there's various radius uh, inlays that can be purchased from this company. Now, once again, uh, and I highly recommend them. Giacomo's inlay stickers. Um, the order that I put in to uh, update this guitar with shipping was $50. Uh, they do have a website, which I'm trying to locate right now. I believe it's uh, inlaystickers.com. Uh, they have an unbelievable variety to choose from, and I highly do recommend them. Uh, in fact, uh, once I get done with this and I have a little bit of time, I'll be back online shopping to see uh, see what they have. My understanding is, uh, even though I haven't found out for sure, that if there's uh, anything special that you want designed or made, including your name, I guess they, they have the ability to do that also. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and throw a set of... Uh, Elixir Custom Lights with the new uh, bone uh, string pegs, and then uh, we'll come back online to just show you the final product. Okay, there we have it. The new set of Elixir Custom Light strings are on, and we've replaced the pins with uh, unbleached bone. Little dot of abalone on those also to give some contrast to the guitar, so it's complete. Unfortunately, we're not able to get the uh, um, sound hole done, but we have written the company uh, to see if we can find something that they have that's in a four inch diameter setting. I'm going to take it on upstairs, we're going to plug it in and play it, and uh, then we'll call this one complete. All right, so everything is completed. We're upstairs in the music room. We've got the Fender new porter plugged in. right at the guitar, the uh, line decal that we've installed has uh, no effect on playing. Again, like I said, we've added that vine decal. We could not do the sound hole, which we'll further investigate, and we've added a set of unbleached uh, bone pins with a new set of Elixir custom light strings. So. Thanks again for watching. If you got any questions, our email is attached. Uh, we'll be talking with you soon.